Live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. At the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube, live from the home of the New England Patriots, and for the ninth year, the VTUG Winter Warmer. Uh, this is, uh, I'm Stu Miniman, and uh, joining me for this segment, I'm glad to have a, a user on here, it's Rog McShinty, uh, who's a senior systems engineer with Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. Rob, Great. thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so, so, so Rob, uh, you're a native New Englander here, uh, live in Vermont, uh, work in New Hampshire. Uh, have you been to the VTUG before? That's my first VTUG, actually, yes. All right, have you been to Gillette before? I've been to Gillette before, okay. yes, many times. Excellent, and excited for Sunday? Oh, definitely, this is you know, it's what you do on Sundays. Yeah, so, so uh, we're real excited. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what's your role at Dartmouth Hitchcock, uh, obviously in the medical yep. uh, field there. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and what, what your IT look like. Okay. Yeah, I work at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. I work as a primarily as a virtualization architect. I do direct -through services on, on it as well. Uh, our team's fairly good, about nine people on it, but it's uh, it's growing, and uh, you know the, ver the medical industry is 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 changing and encompassing affiliations and. <sighs> On our team, we are uh, we're trying to keep up with that, and virtualization has played a, a huge part in that of how we keep up with infrastructure and changes, and and it's really evolved, you know, since we've been working with it over the last, you know, you know, eight nine years. Yeah, I mean, every company has to deal with the, the, the growth and the changes that are going on. When you add things like co government compliance on there, um, you know, you, you've got all the HIPAA and everything else. So, uh, you know, th those are big challenges. Um, Give us some speeds and feeds. How many locations you got? Do you have like know how many servers you have? Things like that. Yeah, locations. We have uh, about six main locations. We are bringing on affiliations, you know, left and right these days as as funding sources change. Um, you know, number of servers we're up right around a thousand servers. Uh, you know, everything grows in leaps and bounds in infinite infinite those days. And you know, we are there to you know, we're a service provider for the for the customers, which oh. are the patients and. And, and and getting that uh, whatever is needed for the, for the patients. All right. So, a thousand servers. You know how many applications you have, and are most of them a single operating system, or what? Do you, what have you got? Well, they, they used to be single operating system, single servers down the road. Over the years, they've turned into uh, you know applications that have 10, 12 uh, uh, servers in it, up to you know our our PeopleSoft applications may have you know 25 or 30 servers. Oh, you're you're talking about VMs. In, uh, VMs uh, as well, VMs, yes. yes. And, and you are just just to be clear, you've got Microsoft. You're an all Microsoft environment running Hyper-V, correct? Correct. We have. Uh, a, a majority of our environment is Hyper-V. Uh, we do have VMware in the environment as well, uh, but it's you know, we 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 straddle between the two. But we are a majority Hyper-V environment. Okay. Have been for quite some time. Okay. And you told me you're Microsoft MVP, and you've been doing Hyper-V for a while now. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2007. We yeah. were in one of the early betas of it. We actually used Virtual Server 2005 before that. Uh, so we've been on the Microsoft stack for quite some time. And now my background comes from a uh, from a more of a Microsoft side as well. So it became second nature at that point. Yeah. And uh, you know, learning and growing with it, and and having the the scripting abilities as well behind the scenes to to fill some of the holes that we needed to at times, and it's met, met our needs, you know, kind of just in times as, as features have come up through the, through the stack. All right. Of course, Microsoft's been been at the center of virtualization for the long time. Even if I'm a VMware environment, it's usually Microsoft applications that are sitting in the guests. Um, you've been doing it a long time now. Can you give us some of that journey? What was your early experiences? What's different now compared to you know what were the early days of Hyper-V? Yeah, oh, definitely. There used to be. Uh, it's, we, we talk about some of the environments that we look with the virtual server 2005 environments are very static and very small and very, uh, but met the needs of some of the easy medical applications. Now the growth in the number of CPUs you could have, the growth in the number of, of the RAM you could have, the speed of the disks, um, and the flexibility of the environment, the, the clustering this came, you know, live migration wasn't there early on. Yeah. Um, you know, live migration is there, it has been there for quite some time, but it's made it much easier. And as it's gone along, even those features that seem second nature now have been improved and sped up um, the, the, the amount of memory, the amount of disk space, the performance, the, the QoS behind the scenes has really grown and really matured to a, a product that has um, even differentiators compared to VMware. So. All right, so, so Rob, you said you've got a little bit of VMware. How do you guys decide internally? Is there special corner cases that need VMware? Or Definitely. You know, how do you balance that we out? We talk about compliance in, in the medical industry and that's, that's largely where our VMware environment com comes from. Um, the FDA approvals that happen for certain applications where they've certified on, on this stuff, anything that touches the patient certifies on a stack that is, um, uh, has 
you know, this type of software, this type of hardware behind the scenes, and that particular vendor may have only certified on on, on VMware at this mm. point. Yeah, we're talking with the Microsoft folks to really get that pushed through, and we can do that. We'd rather do uh, a larger stack on Hyper-V, but you know, sometimes we have to go that route, and we, we do. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of ironic. We think about it from uh, just a technology standpoint. If it can be certified on bare metal Microsoft, it should work, it, it's going to work on Hyper-V, so shouldn't right. it be able to be certified? It, it, it's the funny thing, I remember back the early days of VMware, we had some of the same discussions same because thing. it only worked on a Microsoft server, yeah. and we'd like, no, no, we're not changing the kernel of the operating system, and you don't even know, and if it's a Microsoft certified server and it's VMware, so we, we, it, we kind of bit flipped from Microsoft being the certified solution to now Correct. VMware being, and now Microsoft, they're catching up though on, on that environment? Well, definitely, the, the number of vendors that support Microsoft, the number of vendors that will now ship us a VHD file for their whole server has grown has grown, um, but we still run into that, and there are certain, it's, it's more of a political than a technical, and we know that it'll run on Windows, we know it'll run on that. Yeah. Um, it is a support and a, a carrot for them to say this is what we, you know, they've got support objectives they have to meet as well, so. Um, there is a need for an environment, but we look at you know, the whole stack. If we can fit it on uh, Hyper-V as, as our main hardware platform, um, than we do because of the savings, and we know that we've been working with long enough that we can get the performance out of it that we need. Yeah, you got to be pragmatic. You need to do what you need to do, do. for, for, your, for your line of business. many great things we'd like to do uh, that have business implications that have put it down, so. All right, so, so Rob, I want to talk about the rest of the stack. One of, one of the biggest challenges with virtualization is it tended to have a ripple effect on the network, uh, on, on the storage. Uh, can you talk about you know, how Hyper-V has impacted the rest of what you do? Uh, definitely, yeah. we looked at, so we've looked at uh, the front end for Hyper-V and how how to maximize cost and performance on that end. Um, it's taken a while for, uh, for management and to trickle down to, to get away from the old you know, three stack type of scenario where you have your, 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 your traditional SAN storage and your traditional networking and then your, and then your, your, your compute level. Um, so we are starting to break down those, those molds a little bit. We, you know, we still have the big iron, the big SANs, the three PARs in our environment for big databases and things like that. We're really trying to, to change the, the mode in our environment to look at, okay, you know, especially with the inf inf influx of flash in the industry um, and SSD storage, um, it's really bringing the ability to have you know smaller converged components, uh, you know, either on board or near or near near the uh, the compute stack as well. All right, so so you t you, you set me up with the convergence discussion. <laughs> I, I know you saw the host the uh, the panel that I yes. hosted this morning on hyperconvergence and uh, you know the, the the leading solution for Hyper V is Grid Store. Have you yep. taken a look at those guys? Uh, definitely, I've worked with uh, with the Grid Store folks a little bit, and I'm actually on their technical advisory count council to uh, with a number of other MVPs to kind of you know see where the industry is going, and and we're we're uh, we're trying to you know help them out as well as you know, gain some knowledge from them of where, they, where, where the industry is going as well. Okay, that, that's great. So they reached out to some of the early Hyper-V guys and they're the really dedicated ones. Yeah. Are you using the technology? Have you played with it some? Oh, we've, we've looked at it and played with it. We, haven't, we, don't, we don't use it at this point, okay. but it's, it's one of those where it's, you know, if you look at the, the structure of how um, you know, a certain, uh, the three-tier stack where you have this huge SAN, now you're looking at a, a, a 2U or a, or a device that can, that can provide a lot of the same power and a lot of the same IOPS uh, you know, storage IOPS has been a, a big issue with, with virtualization, and you know the CPUs have gone through the roof. The memory is, is, has come down. Um, you know, one of the major bottlenecks is your is your is your storage infrastructure, and it can really, you know, put a bad taste in your, your virtualization environment and, and, and it have some bad impressions if, if you can't keep up with that. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious. How much do you get to talk to other people that are trying out Hyper-V, or that they, they want to know about it? Do they come to you regularly for uh, a resource? I do. I try to. I try to have them come to me, and I, I, I reach out as an MVP. It's kind of what I've. You know, I enjoy going out and talking in events like this, or, or other events and uh, smaller uh, user group events. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's it's something I like to try to. You know, a lot of people are still. They have the concept of Hyper-V still in the 2008 R2 range, and we're trying to get them into the, the range of say, it's, it's totally different. These are all new features. These are differentiation, even differentiating features with VMware at this point. Yeah. Which is something they had, they were playing catch up for a long time, and now there's some features that are out there that are, that are actually different and unique. Yeah, uh, so, so Rob, it's always, you know, you get one chance to make a first impression, and of course, if you've gone through three different iterations of the product, they're going to remember what they heard years ago, right. um, and especially, some might have tried it, it wasn't ready, it, it, it obviously has matured, they've closed the gap, they've got some differentiating, what, what are some of the differentiations you see oh. that, that uh, Microsoft's leading the pack Definitely with? Definitely differentiations are, as far as how they're managing um, the, the migrations, how they're the storage, and, and how they're migrating the, the, the ability to move VMs between, between the, the live migration has come a long, long way, whether it's storage migration, the ability to move VMs, the cross-version um, 
live migration, so you don't have to you know, reinstall and, and move stuff in an offline fashion with, with, with Hyper-V anymore. Uh, some of these features that have been you know, standard with VMware for many years uh, are now in Hyper-V, and, and a lot of people don't know that yet. They think it's still a, a kind of a, a class two hypervisor, or, um, but, it's, uh, but it's really come a long way as far as that, and even going forward, um, there's some great features in the next version of, of, of Hyper-V coming in, and uh, especially with, with clustering and making them more resilient. You know, instead of the clusters just reacting because some, one little thing went down, they're making it so that they can uh, withstand some of these and, and not have it react so quick, keeping the workloads running, and then retrying and getting these things, getting pieces back. So it's, yeah, it's uh, so how transparent is Microsoft on the roadmap that they're working on? How much interlock do they have? Is it special because you're an MVP, or in general, you know, what, what, what's the relationship with Microsoft? The my, you know, obviously as the MVP, I get to look at a lot of the early bits and a lot of, see a lot of the webcast early on what's happening, but you know, a lot of it, it's out, the technical preview's out now, or, no, the betas are out now, or, or the previews are out now, and it's really, uh, it's been a great, uh, it, it's been shaping up to be a, a good, good run forward, even with the System Center stack, which has been you know, a little shaky in the past, but it, it's really starting to come up as, a, as the wraparound of how you manage this on a larger scale. Yeah, uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about the management. Sure. Uh, you know, vCenter is the center of the world yep. for VMware environments, their system center. Uh, talk about your experience with the management, and how, how do you manage, you've got both environments, what, what, what do you do? Yeah, so we do have separate instances, and I have instances. we also have um, our, our VMM, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, that has views into, uh, into the vCenter environment as well, and so you, can, you can see the whole uh, uh, VMware environment as well. Uh, we use that more for the day-to-day -day type of access for um, you know, able to find VMs, console to VMs for our, for our, our administration staff. Uh, we still are split between vCenter and, uh, and VMM for deeper level management. Um, we've looked at some third parties, but then you got to get into third parties, how they can keep up with both sides as they innovate fast. So uh, we are still split at this point. But the, uh, you know, the management stack of how we monitor through operations manager and how we manage through VMM, uh, you know, there's a whole other side of the group in, our, in mind that, that runs most of the VMware side and or come from VMware side centric, so we butt heads every once in a while, who's better, but <laughs> it keeps a good banter in the office and, uh, uh, and it's fun. And we both realize that it's technologies and there's, there's, there's strengths and weaknesses in both of it. And right, you you got to have somebody to, to dilute the Kool-Aid a little bit uh, if you're uh, uh, too uh, deep in one solution. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when yours went down two weeks ago? Yeah, a, no. <laughs> yeah um, uh, <laughs> speaking about going down, let's talk about cloud for a second. Sure. What, you know, what, what is your organization? Think about cloud, obviously there's compliance issues, but I mean, every company uses some cloud, so what, what, what's, uh, what, what's your company's so uh, we're using, role on cloud? Uh, we're now we're, we're, we're toes in the water with cloud as far as uh, test and dev in this scenario scenario. Uh, even though the compliance is there, the, the HIPAA compliance, the FISMA compliance are all, are all you know, on paper and in stone, uh, there is still a, 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 a political and a, and a fear factor that's been out there for a while. Okay, and, and can, can you share what clouds you're looking at or uh, using? Or? From, from our standpoint, we, uh, since we came from a Hyper-V perspective, their cloud story is really kind of a, a very nice stack for us. Well, uh, with VMware in the mix, you know, we haven't really thought of where, where that cloud stack would go, but you know, thinking of how you know, backup products interact with now Azure and, and, and how um, we could move from you know, internal cloud using uh, Windows Azure Pack to an external cloud fairly easily, um, especially with, with the new products coming out uh, with vNext here. Um, that's, from our, that seems to be the easiest transition for us from a stack perspective of, of what we're familiar with. Um, so you know, I think we're looking more towards Azure just because we've you know, said the same reason why we kind of went with Virtual Server 2005 in the beginning. It, it kind of meets our, our skill set and our familiarity and our programming as far as PowerShell goes all the way up the stack into Azure as well. So um, it makes sense for us in that scenario. Great, uh, so Rob, your first time at the event, not sure what you've gotten to check out. What, what do you look for when you come to an event like this? What brings you here and uh, you know, what, what gets you excited? Well, I, it, I think just coming to the event really kind of recharges you to think of, 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 of the way people are doing things. Um, it goes back and you think about new ideas of how to bring to the organization. You know, you're not going to change everything, but it gives you, it gives you a refreshing view of, of where things are. Uh, you see the different, you know, different hyper-converged people and where, where that will be in, in one or two years. Um, you know, I, I do it for the networking as well. I meet a lot of people down here that I know, and, uh, and uh, uh, it really gets it gets you thinking outside of the box of, of your day-to-day -day environment. There's things we do every day in our environments that are just that are just uh, just part of, of the job. Um, but but you know, my management as a, as a senior systems engineer, they they're asking me where we should go as well and how we maybe 
you know, how maybe we break away from our current mold. Sometimes they don't like that, but that's part of what they do. All right, Rob, the last question I have for you is, uh, talk about the role between IT and the business. Uh, you yes. know, in, in general, that can be a, a, a kind of charged political environment. I have to environ, and medical is just going through such drastic changes. I don't want any political statements no, no. necessarily, but how does, how does the bigger world and the business impact your IT, and how has that, uh, that relationship been changing over the last few years? The relationship is, is is good. Um, I would say that, that you know, there are lots of things and lots of innovative things we'd like to do as, as technical. We always, you know, if you're not in technology and, and you, if you're in technology and you don't like change, then you shouldn't be there. So we are all looking forward and where we should do and we have some great ideas of where we think the organization should go. Uh, we do get some pushback as far as whether the management thinks it's too early or the upper management is ready to make an investment in that for a technology that may be only you know, three or four years old where you're talking about you know, uh, maybe a sand technology that is structured that's, that's you know, 10 years old um, of how that, how that works. And uh, it's really making a business case and it kind of teaching, you know, from my standpoint, going beyond technology and getting a, a financial and a, and a technical, bringing that into the financial world as well for them to say, okay, we can go forward with this, and especially with, like we, with virtualization, we can, we can move back easily in case things happen. Uh, everything's kind of containerized, so we can move stuff back and forth into newer technologies to try things out and get our toes in the water like um, different technologies in-house or even in the cloud, so. All right, so do you find that the technology innovations are allowing you to move forward when you've got all the pressures of, you know, keep the budget down or cut the budget or anything like that, or? I think that being in the virtualization field has really helped because that's been, an, especially server virtualization, that's been an easy win for us to say uh, early on in the days, you know, this is a, a server that runs work, one workload, I can run 30 of these on this same type of size. Um, it's getting harder because virtualization for us has become the norm, and now we're trying to squeeze even more money out of a out of some, out of a lemon that's already squeezed. <laughs> um, but, but but management is asking us to do that, and they're looking for other that, and they're seeing peers that are doing this as well. So they're coming to us and saying, "Well, hospital down the road is doing this, so should we be doing it?" And we kind of say, "Well, maybe yes, maybe no," um, and we don't. We may not agree with what, what they're doing, but we need to check things out. We need to get it running. All right, Rob, well, hey, if, it, if it's a lemon we're, we're, we're dealing with, we can only turn it into lemonade, and if not, we can puree it and make uh, some <laughs> baked goods out of it. Much better than trying to get blood from a stone. Really appreciate okay. you, you joining no uh, us for this segment. Uh, appreciate all you do to give back to the community. Sure. Um, you know, it, without the programs like the MVPs and the speakers at this event, it's just so much harder for anybody to understand the new technology. So, uh, always great when we can get the user uh, e experience here uh, at the UC User Group and at all the shows we're at. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest uh, after this quick break.